So you've been asked to photograph your first wedding. What an amazing opportunity. You're gonna feel really excited. Then, <laughs> then the pressure and the nerves start to kick in. But don't worry, because in this video, I'm going to talk to you about everything that you can do to prepare to give yourself the best chance possible of this becoming something that you really love. So just before we start, if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name's Neil and I've been a wedding photographer now for around 13 years. And in that time, I'd estimate I've shot around 400 weddings and I've been lucky enough to photograph weddings in lots of different countries. So let's just start by saying that photographing a wedding isn't easy. It can be incredibly difficult. It's a high pressure job, which can be physically and mentally very challenging, but with good preparation and practice, it really can be the best job in the world. So if you've been asked to photograph a wedding for the first time, congratulations. I'm sure you're going to love the whole experience and hopefully this video is going to really help you with that. So I'm not going to talk about cameras and equipment in this video. Needless to say though, in my opinion, you should have a minimum of two cameras and two lenses just to make sure that you have a backup because tr trust me, weddings are not the place to be if your one and only camera suddenly stops working that's like nightmare scenario uh, in terms of lenses I would recommend that you have at least one wide lens such as a 24 mil or a 35 mil and also a lens with a longer reach such as an 85 mil which can be really nice for portraits or a zoom lens will do the trick a 24 to 70 just to cover all those focal lengths also take more batteries than you think you will need and the same goes for memory cards too you don't you don't want to be in the middle of a ceremony and realize that your only memory card is almost full and you have to start deleting pictures so two cameras and the more batteries and memory cards you have the better just take more than you think you're going to need. If you don't do this already, I would also recommend that you set your camera to shoot in RAW as opposed to just JPEG. RAW files will allow you to make more changes to them afterwards when you're editing than a JPEG file can. And that can be a massive help, especially if you're photographing your first wedding. Back in 2006, when I shot my first wedding, I decided to start shooting RAW the day before the wedding. Uh, I'd read in a magazine that it was a good idea to do that, even though I wasn't entirely sure at the time why that was. And I'm just so, so lucky that I read that magazine because had I only shot in JPEG that day, I'm pretty sure, I'll be honest, I'm pretty sure I would not have shot a second wedding. The fact I shot in RAW really did save me and help me out. Oh, and if your camera makes a beep every time it focuses, you want to turn that off too. You should also make sure that you have the correct insurances in place. It's unlikely that you will anything will happen where you will need those insurances, but you need to have them in place just in case. The best way to start out as a wedding photographer, I think, is to try and gain experience through second shooting. Second shooting will help you get used to how a wedding day runs and you'll also gain confidence in your own ability. So if you get the chance before the wedding that you're going to shoot, ask other local photographers if you can go and assist or second shoot for them. I just think that the more used to the runnings of a wedding day you are, the more confidence you will then feel. I should just say, to be honest, though, that I'm a terrible example for anyone who's just starting out though, as I didn't do this. I didn't do any second shooting whatsoever. I just went straight in and tried my best. And luckily for me, it did work out fine. But you, to give yourself the best chance, you do want to try and get a bit more experience of how a wedding day runs but even if you do second shoot just be aware that shooting a wedding on your own is a totally different experience so do expect to feel more nervous and more anxious but don't let those feelings worry you and just be aware that they are completely normal there is nothing wrong with feeling nervous now one of the biggest things which is going to help you when you're shooting your first wedding if not the biggest thing is good preparation. If you're anything like me, the more prepared you feel for something, the less stressed you're going to be about it and you'll do a better job for that. A big part of good preparation is getting to know your bride and groom. Now, for many wedding photographers, your first bride and groom may well actually be friends of yours. That's exactly how it was for me. In actual fact, if you'd like to find out about how I started out in wedding photography, I will link to a video which I made up here <laughs> somewhere where I talked about exactly how I started out. Being friends with your bride and groom can be a 
big help because as you already know them, you'll know their personalities and what they are like as a couple. But if you don't know them, I would definitely recommend meeting up with them at least once before the wedding day have a drink together and just talk through the day. You could even offer to do an engagement shoot for them as well. Anything that's going to help you just to get to know them a little bit better. Chances are you're gonna be more nervous than the bride and groom. So assuming that they know and, and they should know that this is your first wedding, then meeting up and talking through everything and just setting realistic expectations is going to make you feel loads better. And I do believe that the better you feel in yourself, because you've set those realistic, and that's the key word, realistic expectations, the more confident you'll then be, and in turn, the better your images will be. Meeting up with a couple is also a really great time to talk through the timings and any plans they have for the day. Knowing the timeline of the day is absolutely essential for preparing for the wedding. Knowing when everything's happening and what the expectations are of you at various times of the wedding day is just, again, going to make you feel so much better prepared mentally and honestly good preparation is just the key to everything when it comes to, to wedding photography. Before that meeting with the bride and groom I would also recommend that you ask them to fill in a preparation form and on that form I would ask them things like uh, their venue details, um, the contact details of the wedding coordinator at their venue. Is there anything in particular that is really important to them from a photography point of view? Uh, also ask for the names and the contact details for some key wedding guests. Hopefully you'll never need them, but just in case you want to be able to contact people and also what group photographs they may like. When it comes to group shots, again, it's important to set realistic expectations. My advice would be to encourage your bride and groom to try as best they can to keep that list as short as possible. Perhaps suggest a maximum of around eight group shots. Chances are your bride and groom won't realize, and you may not either at, the, at this point, that taking group shots can be quite time consuming on the day. So the smaller the list, the better. But again, it's something that you're going to want to agree on before the day itself. You don't want any of this to be news to you on the day. Once you have the list, I would also suggest reordering that list into an order that's going to flow well on the day. Personally, I like to shoot the biggest groups first and make the groups smaller and smaller until we're just left with the very smallest groups at the end. That just means that people aren't left waiting around on the day, waiting to have their photograph taken. It can also be a really good idea to ask the bride and groom for the names of a couple of guests who know the people in the group shots who you can then use on the day for their help just if things are getting a little bit rushed because that can be quite a stressful time. So once you've met your bride and groom, you've got to know them a bit better, you've discussed the day, you know all the timings, you know the group shots, you should hopefully be feeling really excited and, and more importantly, really ready as well. The other big thing to do before shooting your first wedding is to visit the wedding venue. The reason that I suggested asking the bride and groom in advance on the preparation form for a contact person at the wedding venue you is because I would always suggest phoning that person and arranging to meet them to see if they could show you around the venue. Wedding coordinators at venues should always be more than happy to do this and it can be really helpful to you as you will know then where everything's going to be happening on the day and which areas you can use. Also useful to know a plan B, if the weather isn't great, where have you got access to at the venue? Again, the wedding coordinator should be able to help you with that. I would suggest visiting the venue a week or two before the wedding at a time of day which is similar to when you'll probably be doing the group photographs and uh, your portraits just so you can see roughly where the sun will be or hopefully where it will be at that time again knowing the venue and where you're going to have access to on the day is going to really help you to feel really prepared and in the weeks leading up to the wedding, I'd also suggest that you just immerse yourself in wedding photography. Look at the websites and the blogs of your favorite wedding photographers. Join wedding photography groups on Facebook. Look at Instagram at wedding photographs. 
and watch online tutorials. You can even take screenshots on your phone of photographs and poses which you could then refer to and use as inspiration on the wedding day. Again, it's all about making you feel as prepared as possible. When I first started out, I would make myself a short shot list for each wedding and I found that to be a really big help. It's not something that I need now, but I found it really useful at the time because it was something that I could refer to on the wedding day to make sure that I wasn't going to forget any of the important images. So, now we get to the day before the wedding the excitement is really going to be ramping up in your head now and the nerves but again that's normal the best piece of advice that i can give you is to make sure that you have literally everything ready to go the day before the wedding so that when you wake up on the wedding day all you need to do is have a shower get dressed pick up your bag and leave so that means having all your batteries charged your memory cards all formatted and everything in your bag ready to go. Also, and this sounds like quite basic things, but do remember to eat well and drink lots of water both the day before the wedding and especially on the wedding day too. This is really important because weddings can be very stressful, high energy, high adrenaline events. So you need to make sure that you drink lots of water because you're going to be using a lot of energy. Even if you may think you're the sort of person who doesn't usually get nervous, trust me, in my opinion, you will almost certainly be nervous on the day, especially if it's your very first wedding. So eating and drinking well is really, really important. So now it's the day of the wedding, the big day. It's really exciting. Chances are you haven't slept very well, but don't worry, that's completely normal. Nerves, anxiety when you first wake up, again, normal, so don't worry. And I just think that that just shows that you care. If you woke up and you were just like, oh yeah, it's just another day, then I don't think you're gonna do as good a job as if you wake up and you do feel nervous. And that energy can be really, really useful. So although you, <laughs> don't be scared, so although you probably won't sleep too well, I do think you're going to wake up full of adrenaline. Uh, I know that I still do now. And again, I think that's normal, but also that adrenaline and that nervous energy is going to really help you to focus and it's gonna become something that's gonna drive you to do a better job. Make sure as well that you leave yourself plenty of time to get to the wedding. However long your, your sat-nav expects the journey to take, I'd definitely recommend that you give yourself a buffer of at least another third of that time. You don't want to be worrying on the morning of a wedding that you're going to be arriving late. That's gonna throw you off. So give yourself plenty of time. At this point, I think it's also a good time just to remind yourself that this is, after all, your first wedding. So be realistic about what it is that you can achieve. Chances are that you're not going to take a whole portfolio's worth of award-winning photographs at your first wedding. So don't go there with the expectation that you are going to be able to do that. The bride and groom, I'm sure, won't be expecting you to do that. So try to not put yourself under too much pressure. Again, I know it's easier said than done, but it, there is no way that you can go there and just absolutely nail everything. Um, so it's important, I think, that you're just realistic with yourself. Although you may want to try and get really creative and go for the big epic shots, just again, just try to remember, in my opinion, just to shoot the simple things first. Getting the simple things right is going to allow you the confidence to then try other things after. But it's, it's key that you just do the basics and get the simple shots first. And remember that no wedding ever go completely to plan. In all the weddings I've ever photographed, no wedding has ever run exactly to time and exactly how it was planned to do. So if anything doesn't go completely as you were hoping, don't worry, don't let it throw you off. Just try to enjoy it as best you can. The best piece of advice that I can give you when it comes to the actual shooting on the day is to try and keep calm and not rush everything. It's really easy at a wedding, especially with this being your first wedding, to feel panicked that you're going to miss something. And when that happens, you end up just shooting really fast. And the faster you shoot, the less you're thinking, and it can be a bit of a tailspin situation. So as best you can, just try to remind yourself to take a deep breath, slow down and just think about what it is you're shooting. And just remember that no one is expecting you to capture absolutely everything. 
because that's just impossible. So all you can do is just do the best job that you can and try your best to enjoy it. And I'm sure, I'm sure that you will. And at the end of the day, when you get home, you're gonna feel really tired. You're gonna probably experience the wedding aches for the first time, but put your feet up, have a drink, and congratulate yourself on a job well done. Weddings are not easy, but they give you so much satisfaction. When you come back from a wedding day and you know you've done your absolute best to take photographs for the bride and groom and create memories for them, it's such a good feeling. And I'm sure that when you come back and know that you've tried your absolute best for them, then you're gonna feel really proud of yourself and that's what it's all about. So if you are about to photograph your first wedding, I really hope this video has helped and most of all, good luck. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.